Hey, it's Dmitry from FlexRC, and in the recent few videos we looked at DJI Digital FPV system I have it right here, and we installed it into my 3-inch uh, Kaluga frame as well as 2-inch Ninja frame. It went very well, uh, but there was a little bit of learning curve before I was able to achieve that, so I decided to create step-by-step -step guide about how to build a drone and how to hook Digital FPV system, uh, so you will be able to start flying in no time. I'm going to use a Flex RC Kalug of 3 inch frame, uh, which you must have seen in uh, my previous videos. I'm going to go with uh, 1407 motors from T Motors and stock from HDLRC, which I really like for this kind of builds. All DJI components require activation before they can be used, and I mean it literally. Before they will be activated, none of them will do anything. Goggles won't allow you to change channels. Remote controller won't control anything. As well as air unit won't allow you to bind or do anything until you will connect them to the computer and activate them. So this will be the first step we will have to do. Uh, for starters, we'll have to download DJI Assistant for FPV system. And I will have a link for it in the description below. Uh, they have two versions, one for Mac and another for Windows. And uh, for myself, I'm going to download Mac version. Uh, but uh, steps will be exactly the same. After the installation, in case of the Mac, uh, you will find DJI Assistant for FPV in uh, application folder of your computer. So we will click on it and start it. And uh, as a first thing, we will activate FPV goggles. So I will put other parts aside and uh, we will connect uh, goggles to the computer. Uh, there is a USB port over here on the left side of the goggles at the bottom. Uh, we connect them like that. Uh, then we connect them to computer and a DJI system will show an icon uh, which will say FPV goggles. Uh, we will click on this icon and simply follow through all the questions such as accept terms of uh, services and such. It will most likely offer you to update firmware, uh, which I will recommend you to do. It will take another uh, 5 to 10 minutes, but it will worth it in order to get all the latest features they've implemented. After that, we will repeat exactly the same steps for our remote controller. Uh, there is a USB port at the bottom here, we will connect it. We'll turn on a remote controller and connect it to the computer. We'll uh, follow exactly the same steps in DJI Assistant and get it activated. As a first step, I usually like to install speed controller to the frame. And I'm going to use uh, my wow stick, uh, which I showed you uh, before. Uh, I still like it, it works very nice. Helps to speed up uh, assembly quite a bit. So I will uh, simply screw in the hardware. As a first step, I usually like to install speed controller to the frame. And I'm going to use uh, my wow stick, uh, which I showed you uh, before. Uh, I still like it, it works very nice. Helps to speed up uh, assembly quite a bit. So I will uh, simply screw in the hardware. But before that, I will uh, quickly show you some of the accessories I designed since the last uh, video with Kaluga. Uh, so first thing is uh, uh, arm protection piece, uh, 3D printed piece, uh, which is installed like that. You basically put it like this and then you screw through it. It allows you to adjust length of the screw. In my case, for example, screw is a little bit too long and also it protects edges of the arm. So in case of the crush, uh, it won't be damaged that easy and it doesn't add too much weight. Other piece is 
protection for the edges of uh, the plates. You can see it makes the plate look very nice. It's kind of like if you painted it, uh, but it is plastic. Uh, so it is something completely optional. I think it makes it look uh, really nice. So you can let me know in the comment section below what do you think about it. It also adds a couple of grams and I have one from the top plate and another one uh, for the bottom plate as well as uh, for the front piece so it will go over here just like that and another change i've made i adjusted the rear design for antennas so rear mount for antennas uh, now it looks like that i increased space between antennas some people commented that antennas have to be a little bit more apart so now at the edges here it is 40 millimeters uh, the space is very limited and available length is very limited because uh, air unit is mounted at the front uh, so I did my best. I will see how it works. I think uh, it should perform nicely as well as it has over here a mount for the buzzer. So this is uh, pretty much it. Other pieces are, are not new, but I will just show them quickly again. Uh, one is, is a holder for air unit. It goes on top like that. So you just mount your air unit that holds it. Another piece, it goes underneath this and what it allows, it lifts air unit a little bit from the bottom plate and allows wires from the motors to go freely under the air unit without being squished, as well as uh, camera mounts. They're very small, a bit hard to see, but uh, we will see it once it will be installed and basically you insert it like this all the way to the bottom all right so now let's mount uh, the motors to the frame i will uh, move away stuff we don't need uh, first uh, thing i'm going to install motor at the back so i will put this edge protector installation of motors is fairly straightforward process uh, so we'll just align it with the holes we'll take screw we'll uh, push screw through the hole essentially all the way to the motor we will repeat it for all three screws it's uh, fairly easy straightforward i really enjoy using wow stick because it helps to speed up assembly a lot and we will just uh, repeat exactly the same step uh, for the last motor of the frame we push uh, in screws then you will align motor with these screws so we'll just screw one screw after another slowly one by one and we've got all the motors installed it was a fairly easy and fast process i would like to uh, make one note though uh, depending on the length of the wires your motors come you may need to extend the wire it also depends on your frame but in this case since i have speed controller at the back of the frame i had to extend this wire a little bit because it was just like couple centimeters short uh, and rear wires are just fine so I kept the original length so now we are going to solder motors to the speed controller for that I'm going to use uh, my trusted uh, TS 100 soldering iron it's uh, it is an amazing device I've been using it for a few years right now I just cannot say anything other than good things about it so first thing we are going to tint pads on the speed controller simply one by one you are tinting all the pads on the speed controller so then we can install wires to it so it can be done in the matter of minutes or so it's a very simple step to do but it's uh, very important before we can uh, solder wires to the speed controller and then uh, what i usually like to do i simply solder them straight right to the speed controller so i'll put it like that you just hold it for a few seconds and uh, until it will cool down and that's it we're done with the first motor and now we will uh, repeat the same steps for all the motors just uh, last two wires we will finish with them quickly and after that we are going to connect it to computer and check direction of the motors and before we can test direction of the motors, we obviously need to be able to connect the speed controller to the battery and I will have to install a battery connector. And on the right side, I, we've got ground 
which is going to be black wire. The wire is going uh, over here, so I'm going uh, to solder it in the opposite direction. I will position it like that. And then I will repeat the steps for the ground wire. I slightly push it with my finger. So yeah, I think it's a fairly good connection right now. It's all installed uh, nicely together. So then we will take a flight controller. In my case, uh, I can benefit uh, that it doesn't require any soldering in order to be installed on top of the speed controller. So I'll just put it like that. And uh, we can uh, do first connection to the battery with the hope it won't explode. And it is alive. So now let's connect it to computer and uh, try to spin motors. So we will uh, go into beta flight, connect and go into motors tab. We'll uh, check that I understand the risks tab. And uh, we'll just spin motors one by one. So you see they all work. So everything is spinning. And the way I like to test direction of the motors, I simply use a piece of paper like that and uh, hold it. So you see it's spinning correct direction. This one spinning correct direction. This one spinning correct direction as well. And this one spinning correct direction as well. So yeah, we are lucky. Uh, no need to change direction of the motors. That's what I like actually about HGLRC. I believe when you do straight connection uh, of the wires, it always works. Now we're simply going to install small spacers on top of the speed controller uh, in order to be able to install flight controller just on top of it and to have it all nice and secure together. And it is basically done. Uh, then we will uh, install flight controller on top. I'm not going to install nuts on top because we will have to solder wires and uh, perhaps we are going to uh, take it out again in order to solder it to proper parts. And then uh, we will install our spacer, uh, which we recently seen like that and push it all the way to the bottom. We can align then motor wires like that. So you can see uh, that spacer kind of leaves the space. Then we'll take our air unit and install it like that. We'll take uh, our top mount, just put like that and push it on top. This is pretty much it. So air unit is nicely installed uh, in the frame right now. The way it will work is that top plate is going to be pushing on top like this, which will add strength to uh, this setup as well. So as you can see it all sits here very nicely together. And uh, before we'll do anything else, we will install camera into the frame. Uh, the way you install it, uh, there is an angle here and it's going to face down. So it's going to go like that, all the way to the bottom. And same thing for other side. We will push it all the way like that. Then we'll just take our camera and uh, put it over here like that. So we'll take our wow screwdriver and simply screw it in like this, align it and just screw it in until it will be installed. Uh, we'll take second side, do exactly the same, push it in, align it and we can install it tighter right now. So I can adjust the angle to the angle I would like to get and screw even more. 
So now it's very tight. At this point, we are ready to wire air unit with the flight controller as well as install buzzer. So the first thing I will do is I will measure how much of the wire you need to keep in order to install it. So I will um, just put here flight controller temporarily. I will uh, align wire like this and I will see that it comes up to here approximately. So I will allow just a little bit of extra space. And this will be the length. Uh, you don't want it to make too tight because in case of mistakes, it might be much more challenging to fix them in comparison if you keep a bit longer wires. So then we'll cut these wires like that, fairly easy. And uh, we will split them just with hand. Uh, it's a bit of uh, challenging to do it just because of how tiny they are. Uh, but I don't know the better way. Uh, one of the, I guess, possibilities is to use cutter and just to do slightly like this uh, to help you splitting them but the danger is uh, sometimes you can uh, ruin insulation so once this wire has been split we can start soldering before that uh, we will remove a bit of insulation in order to have uh, internal wire exposed just like that after that, we'll have to tint these wires and start soldering them to the flight controller. So I will put our model a little bit away. So I'll put this wire like that and I will uh, take my soldering iron and we'll just quickly tint ends of these wires so we can solder them to the flight controller easily. All right, uh, you can see, unfortunately, this wire is not silicon, so you have to be careful. If you will heat it up too much, it will just melt all the way. Once it is done, uh, we will start uh, tinting pads we are going to use on the flight controller. The S bus, the ground pad just next to the S bus, ground pad over here then on the other side we'll have to tint uh, basically TX and RX ports of your choice in my case it's going to be TX6 and RX6 so just tint like that as well as I will prepare buzzer pad for installation by tinting it. We need uh, to tint BB and plus 5 volts. So we've got nice drops of solder on top of the pads. And uh, next step will be just uh, to solder appropriate wires to appropriate pads. All right, in order to make our job easier, I will just have a wiring diagram next to me. So I will avoid uh, mistakes and I will put flight controller in top of Kaluga so it will lift it a little bit. Uh, usually you will have uh, a more convenient setup versus what I have for the video. We'll start with uh, battery and ground pads. It's always uh, good to use uh, some tweezers in order not to burn yourself and it's easier to align wires like this as well. So we've got battery and uh, minus uh, soldered. Next is going to be S bus and minus. These are yellow and brown wires. So the brown will go to minus and yellow will go to S bus. Brown wire goes to minus and uh, yellow, which is also sort of brown, just a bit lighter, but it's more like orange. And yellow goes to S bus. We've got ground soldered as well as S-Bus soldered. 
After that, we are going uh, to solder RX and TX wires in order to get OSD on our goggles. So, just pull it out a little bit like that. The white wire goes to TX pad, so just do like this. And the uh, gray wire goes to RX pad. So I've got a uh, white wire soldered uh, to the X pad and the uh, gray wire to RX pad. Next, we're going to install buzzer. So first of all, we have the same kind of wire. So we will just uh, split it like that. We'll expose a little bit of wires like that. And then I usually like to solder buzzer first. So we have uh, here a sticker which says that plus is here and then uh, ground is other side. We will um, slightly shorten these legs because they're just way too long. Then as before, we will just uh, tint these legs just like that. We'll tint our wires as well. Then we'll solder red to plus. and black to minus. And we've got uh, it all soldered nicely together. So next step will be just uh, to solder these wires to flight controller before we can uh, put it all together. As a final step, we just solder minus to BB pad and plus to plus five volts. It is basically done. You can see everything is uh, nicely soldered to flight controller. And it is uh, ready to be installed on top of uh, the speed controller. So I'll align these uh, wires like that. Then I will insert connector into air unit. So it goes like that. So I've got it nicely inserted and then we'll simply put it on top of this structure there is a bit of excess of wire which is totally fine you can tuck it in some something like that it won't stand in the way and or make any problems at all. We are going to uh, screw these nuts on top of the flight controller so it will stay in place and uh, want to move. So just like that, you don't really need to use any tools for that. You don't have uh, to have it uh, very tight and also you don't want to damage electronics in case of uh, if your hand will slip. So just like that, everything is tight stays together nicely just make sure that nothing is uh, loose and not moving and now we can install antennas i've pre-installed antennas in the new holder i've designed so it looks like this and it has a hole for the buzzer so we will remove the sticker insert it into this hole and simply push this um, antenna mount onto standoffs. And then we will have to insert antennas, twist them a little bit in order to get the angle we want and push it into air unit. And we will repeat the step for the second antenna as well. What helps is if you will lift air unit slightly and then you will use something to push it inside Oop, like this. So now it's time to test that everything is working as expected. I will suggest you to always use smoke stopper on first connection. In my case, I'm fairly confident uh, that everything went well, so I'm not going to use it. Uh, so uh, the easy way to do it is, uh, we can see everything initialized well, everything beeped. All lights are flashing. So now we are going to connect air unit to computer. 
and activated before it can be used. It is activated exactly the same way as other components. Uh, you simply run DJI uh, Assistant and there you follow through the questions they ask. You update firmware and it is ready to go now. So now we can just bind it to our uh, transmitter. Uh, you will power it up by pressing button two times. After that, you hold this button, this button, and record button. So you press them all at the same time, and it starts uh, beeping like that. It means it is ready to be bound. Then you use ejector pin and press here once. In a few seconds, you hear confirmation that uh, they are bound right now. Uh, after that, we can uh, turn it off and uh, bind it with uh, our goggles. The idea is exactly the same. Uh, there is a small hole over here. You can see it. We use same ejector pin, press it. It starts to beep and we press this button over here done so easy like that okay so now we are going uh, into beta fpv settings so i will connect flight controller to computer we'll connect uh, to beta fpv we can see that it is connected uh, first step will be to calibrate accelerometer so we'll just click this button then we'll go into ports and activate uh, Serial RX for UART1. Uh, this is where SBUS is on HGLRC flight controller. And we'll activate MSP for UART6 because I've soldered uh, TX and RX wires uh, to TX6 RX6. We'll hit save and reboot. Then we will uh, reconnect again. I will go into config, double check that ESC is set to D-Shot. We'll choose serial based receiver protocol and here we'll choose SBUS. We will hit save and reboot as well. So now we can verify that a uh, receiver indeed works. So we'll uh, power it up, turn on our transmitter. At this point, you will be able to see uh, that uh, channels in receiver pad uh, went all the way to the left. And we'll have to verify that all channels work as expected. Uh, usually, uh, you will have to switch it to FR Sky and hit save in order to get it all working. And then I like to set up modes. In the modes, uh, you will uh, simply pick uh, what you want to set up, for example, horizon, and then flip the switch. It will detect automatically its position. So by default, I usually set it into horizon. Uh, then you can activate beeper, for example, on this switch. So I'll just shift it like that. And then I like to set up a flip over after crash. And I will set it to this position. I will al align the range selectors and hit save. So you can see it works. I can arm it. So everything is uh, fine. And as a last step, I will simply screw bolts into the top plate and uh, complete our installation. So it's all been built and ready to fly. Optionally, you can also use some electric tape around arms in order to make it uh, look even nicer. In my case, I think it's uh, good as it is. Uh, 
And I hope you enjoyed my video. I appreciate you sticking with me till uh, the very end of it. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions, suggestions. I will check and respond each and every comment you will leave. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the bell button in order not to miss any uh, new videos I will upload. Thanks a lot. Happy flying and see you later.